Ho, what's going on YouTube? It's Donnie B all day. I know I'm looking kind of half boat, half safari here, but we're going to rock it. So here's the deal, fellas and fellettes. Um, I'm going to adjust this tripod. Uh, the D-Bad Campmaster, made by the Kukri House, designed by yours truly. Oh, it came in. I mean, it came in and it is phenomenal now what sucks about this is you are about to see this knife in my hands if this knife were being shown to you by a normal sized human being you would not believe how absolutely big this little knife is let's get into it besides the um let's get into this sheet real quick that perfect goat skin ugh, awesome soft leather sheath wood inserted um, typical Kukri style sheath. Now, the best part about these sheaths is that every sheath is handmade for that particular knife that it belongs to. So when they're done forging the knife, they make the sheath around it. So this isn't a bin of sheaths and they grab one and throw it in, grab one and throw it in, and maybe some are just a little bit off. Maybe some of the blade sizes are just a little bit off and your sheath isn't just right. No, they hand form every sheath to every knife they make awesome and you can see once i get it in there um fits like a glove fits like a glove it's nice and tight it's right it's out of sight look i can barely move my arm you know having shoulder surgery and then being a natural lefty and just trying to use your arm I can't even describe to you the amount of pain I'm in just showing you this knife right now. Now, I wanted to give you guys a full, full-blown D-Bad camp experience with this knife, but because of the shoulder, I can't do it. So I'm giving you a video today, a basic video, and then I'm coming back to it. I will be coming back to it. I'm going to take this thing out in the camp, and we are going to get it going. Look at this monster. Now, again, it's in my hands which fits like a freaking glove. The natural wood handle, ho, 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 ho. You have your lanyard hole, so you have the one hollow pin. Um, finger grooves all the way through. Nice deep wells to act like a handguard so you are not getting any slippage. You are talking about a tapered seven millimeter blade, which tapers again down to, on the spine because it still needs to have penetration abilities when you're going through carcass and things like that. You need to be able to stab through, but you also need a spine for wood processing, things like that. This is an ultimate camp knife. Camp, camp, camp. This isn't an ultimate fighting knife. Oh, man, that hurts. Um, which you can use this for, obviously. But um, I wanted to make a camp knife that this is the one go. This is bring it every single camping trip, every single hiking trip that you're going to need. This is the one. Um, it's good for foraging, digging, cutting, chopping, um, batoning, slicing, separating, and you can go through animal with it. This is supposed to be the one all camp knife, right? And that's why it's called the D-Bad Camp Master. Now, you're going to be looking at an 11 and a half inch overall package with a 6 inch blade. But it doesn't look as big as it is. Why? Because of the 2 inches of blade width. Look at how wide this is. I need somebody else to hold this so you can really see. You know what I mean? This thing is 2 inches. This is the same size belly wise right here as a muso buoy that's two inches right so you're looking at an amazing drop point because you need to be able to um to do fire holes um and let me try to think you i wanted obviously i told you about the tapering for the spine you see this nice little area right here that holds the weight and holds the strength, the strength throughout the blade. The two inches gives you plenty of dig space. So if you have to make a little hole or you have to um, shuck something, you can shuck with this knife. Um, every single thing about this was designed for camp hike type of purposes. Um, this knife is awesome. I mean, 
It is fantastic. And what we're going to do is we're going to go outside and we're going to do the crippled version of a nice test, uh, a nice, a nice test, a knife test. And we are going to see how it performs before we do that. Hold on. We cannot talk about a Kukri House made knife without talking about the Kukri House knife maker. This guy right here, AJ Majar, um, louder, whatever. Uh, how do you, how do you pronounce that? My man, I don't know, AJ, you got to help me out. Um, Lauer, maybe AJ Majar Lauer. Um, this guy right here is the man responsible for creating my design, the D Bad. Now you, it looks like it got a couple scratches on it. Yeah, sorry, I couldn't wait. I used it a little bit. Um, had to, I had to. I got so excited it came in yesterday. I can't wait a full day. So, right here, this is. All the specs they give you on the guy. I mean, everything, even, what's that, thumbprints, fingerprints? That's what it is. They even got his fingerprints, so you know the man that makes your knife. Makes it a very personal item. When you buy Kukri House items, you get a very personal item. And um, that's what I love. They do not have shelves and shelves full of this stuff. When you order one, they make you one. Some guy gets out there with a hammer and ding, 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 and bangs away over a fire and a pair of sandals kneeling on the freaking ground, makes you one. That's how real these people are. The people over in Nepal are no joke knife makers, completely old school. They do it right. And that's why I only go back to them when it's time to make these amazing creations. Um, and that's why you can go on to www.thekukrihouse, K-H-U-K-U-R-I house.com and look at D-Bad Designs. This one is going to be up there really soon. It's not up there today because the video had to be shot. So as soon as I get them, the video and all the information that I had to write down on the blade, um, they will put it up on the website. This will be for sale for anyone, but talking is cheap. All right, so... We're starting kind of differently than I would normally start with a knife, but this is a camp knife. One of the main things about camping is securing yourself a shelter. For shelter, many times you need to find, ah, my shoulder. You need to find pieces of tree, thin trees like that. I'm gonna try to get some of these right-handed and we'll see how it goes. Not so bad. So getting pieces of stick down things like that, even to work around the fireplace to, to make stakes, to make a uh, to uh, make a pit for a fire pit, and you can go across and put food down. Stuff like that is very, very important. I'm gonna try my left hand just through the wrist because I feel like I need to. Now, it's a six inch blade, which normally you would think because it's six inches, this is not going to be a chopper, but because it has a two inch wide blade and because it's finger grooved all the way down, you have a grip in every different place on this knife. So my six inch blade turns into a nine inch blade by holding it at the rear, right? So let's see, I wanna keep you guys in there. I got some, got some stuff hanging all over the place. All right, so now I'm gonna go for this thick piece right here. Hopefully it won't knock you guys down. This is so painful, guys. This is what I do for you. Oh man. Okay, here we go. Trying to not move a shoulder while you chop. It's not the easiest thing in the world. There we go. Man, if my surgeon saw this. All right, so just like that, I'm able to chop down what I need to start things like making shelters or traps or ow, anything to that nature. That is so painful. All right. Oh, man, that is so painful. All right, here we go. Here we go. You need an edge on your blade that's going to be able to, oh man, that really hurts. I gotta try this way, that is, that is some most pain I could describe to you guys, man. It is crazy. And being a natural lefty, I am not a natural righty, but luckily the blade is doing pretty much all the work. It's just, you can see the pieces flying off 
right at your faces. I wish you guys had 3D glasses on for this. Um, the sticks! Um, it's just awesome, man. The thing is exactly what I wanted it to be, how I designed it to be. And um, it's a beast. It's a beast, man. Two inches, two inches wide in the blade. When I designed it, I thought, is that going to be too much? And then I said, no, because I put in my head the weight distribution and how I was designing it. And I said, I think it's going to be A-OK. -okay. And um, so far, it's A-OK. -okay. So now here you see I'm making like a spear, maybe for fishing or uh, defense or maybe a pit spike. Or maybe you just need to throw some steak up there or a piece of chicken or bird, whatever you catch. You're going to need a blade that can do it all. This is going to be the blade to do it all. Let's uh, let's take a walk. We have to go way over there, so I'm going to press pause. All right, we made it to the stump. I'm going to see what I can do. And I'm too dumb to just try and use my right hand. So, so now camping, one, a big, big thing is cutting twine, rope, things like that. So you can tie stuff down or build your shelter things like that very very important part of camping is being able to have the ability to um to make yourself some rope the way you need it the size you need it because ah it's insanely insanely important let's see here let's see here that two inch wide blade makes stuff like this just splitting uh, absolute breeze absolute breeze I mean every freaking time every freaking time all right so let's do this here let's get a nice grind in there and we'll do some pulls there we go so we got to get a we got to get a fire started or you just like to make sticks look pretty this is how we do it right here and uh this knife right here, woo! Look at these guys right here. Look at those guys right here. You need to make some fluff, get things going. You need a camp knife. You need a freaking camp knife. And that right here is what we have. So, all right, let's see. Let's see, I don't have a full piece out here. Oh man, I can't reach it. I gotta stand up, all right, good. There we go. So now we're gonna beat on the spine just to see the edge and uh, a spine holds up and it's uh, not gonna have a problem. I picked up prematurely. <clears throat> Let's split this into fours. We have enough blade length because it is six inches and the edge it goes almost all the way to the, uh, to the handle. Oh my God, this is so much pain. There we go, get through the knots. And now I have four pieces where I just had one. <laughs> Man, that really hurts. So, the edge is perfect. The edge is perfect. But we're not done because when you're out camping, you gotta eat, sometimes you gotta hunt. And while this isn't gonna be a hunting knife, you're not gonna throw this at your game. However, um, man, I wish my arm was good because I really wanna throw this. Um, you are gonna hunt a game with some other thing. And let's say you catch yourself a pheasant or a bird. Hold on. All right, so we got some rain here, so everything's wet. So starting a fire is not going to be the easiest thing today, but I'm going to try anyway. I'm going to set it up in a little shovel over here. Just take all that wood that I just started, and I got some pine needles, and I'll show you. And this part of the spine right here, wow, that hurts. Ugh. Man, this is where you see that spark right there. Okay, that's where we're going to be starting our fire. I personally prefer to use the end of the Ricasso. It's not going to hurt your blade, and it's all the way up here, so it's not going to affect anything. That's what I like to use, so I wouldn't even use this. Um, so when I start my fire, I'm going to go right here on that last little bit where they see how it curves. So there's a reason why I designed things to curve right there. That's where I'm going to strike. But I got a little fire and a shovel set up right there, and I have a chicken. Got myself a nice little chicken so I can show you guys because I can't get out there and, and get anything myself. But processing, camp blade, big time importante. 
and you see how it cruises right through that chicken skin. I mean, that is easy. So now there's a trick to the trade. You can try and saw ah, through your through your chicken bones and stuff like that, or you can give it a little smack with a baton. And just like that, your chicken leg is separated from the from the body. Now you can, it's a great way to do it, uh, you know, against all parts of your animal here. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just go from the spine. Let me try to turn it toward you guys. I'm gonna go from the spine and I'm just gonna open up that spine really, really nice. And now I'm gonna get all the way to the bone. So all I have to do, uh, struggle, pick this thing up and get like that, get like that. Make sure it's all the way through. And just like that, I have halved my chicken, right? My bird, whatever I just caught, I just sent in half. So let me uh, de-leg the other side here. No problem. And just like that, we have chicken that is ready to go. So now, there's different ways to cook things. You can either put them, um, put them on a spit and cook them. You could smoke them. You could uh, do anything you want. What I like to do sometimes when I'm out camping by myself because I'm in no rush, right? This isn't alone. Um, what I'll do is I'll cut off pieces just like this. So pieces of whatever meat that I have, whatever meat that if I killed something, I'm using that meat. So I'm gonna take off just little pieces, right? And I'm going to individually cook each piece over the fire. A, it's a lot faster to cook a piece and you can get a very, very good eyeball on it and see how thorough that you are, um, you're cooking your meat through. So it makes it very, very simple. Right now, let me grab my ferro rod wherever I put it. Of course, I lost my ferro rod. And um, I'm going to get the fire started. Just a little one. And I'm just going to show you, um, actually... Before I do that, I probably need to make a stick to put my food on. And that's what I'm gonna do right here. Make a stick to put my food on. Let's see here. Oh, I brug it because it's got, uh, I picked the driest, most feeble stick on the planet. Let me see if I can get myself a nice tip and then break it. There we go. Looking good. Looking good. There we go. There we go. That's what we needed. That's what we needed. So now what I'll be able to do is skewer my meat with this with this stick. And I will be able to dangle that over a little fire. Ugh. All right. I found my ferro rod. I'm going to get a fire going, actually. Let's see. I might be able to just do this real quick. Real quick. I know everything's wet, but pine needles usually do help and good fluff usually does help. So I'm gonna try. Ow. There we go. Come on, light. Light, you some biatch. All right, so the fire, I got the fire started first, first swat, but let's see if it's gonna stay, if I can get these pine needles lit. And you'll see some smoke coming up. But I got you guys so far away because I really thought about this. And hopefully, hopefully, we're going to have just enough fire. I don't know. Oh, here's my stick. Just enough fire to get this little piece of chicken up and cooked. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with my there we go. I'm going to start with my chicken right over that little area. And I'm probably going to have to move you guys over. So let me put this guy right down. I'm going to put it right down on the wood that's burning. Move you guys over to the area. Meow. And so now you see my chickadee. And all I'm going to do is just hold it over this little tiny fire. And I'm going to cook all the way through this little piece of chicken. And so now normally what I'd be doing is I'd be making my fire bigger, right? And then I would have no worries because this is not a very hot fire. It's very small. Um, but 
you'll get the you'll get the whole the whole gist of it just as a, a little tiny tiny starter job right here all right there I got the, the heat cooking up my chicken you see the outside of it already starting to um, starting to whiten and that's it man and you can do this while you're camping that way you know you just take one bite after another instead of sitting around now I'm not gonna be starving the whole time because I'm cooking one little piece at a time take a bite put another piece on and as long as you have fire it's gonna work right so as as long as the fire is burning the fire the fire still burns all right so with all this wet wood it's gonna be a pain in the butt I'm gonna have to keep this fire going so it's gonna be boring for you to watch hold on so my little fire oh damn it stayed burned just long enough to give me a nice charred little piece of chicken now what you can do is you can take a bunch of sticks and put a bunch of little pieces on and lean it right over your fire so you're cooking a bunch of pieces at once that way you're it's rather than cooking this big whatever you just caught on the bone you can skin it up take off the meat process it and cook it piece by at little tiny pieces that way you're guaranteed to be cooked remember overcooked is better than undercooked always when it comes to especially a chicken so bon appetit let's see mm, cooked all the way through that's really good too uh, mm, there you go look at that cooked all the way through and mm, when you're out camping a little bird cooked over an open fire Mmm, look at that beauty. Ah, uh, it's exactly what the doctor ordered. Let me throw a piece of the dog. Yeah, there you go. So that's that's what it takes. It, it's just real simple stuff, man. Real, real simple stuff. Now remember, being a um, a very high carbon blade, um, they are susceptible to rust and oxidation. Well, mostly oxidation, not rust. Um, which is, which is very, very a easy to keep from happening and b even easier to clean up. If you take a, a 2000 grit ah, piece of sandpaper, I mean, 2000 grit, you got into something really smooth and you use water and you sand while you're using water, the oxidation will come right off. You're not going to damage the blade. You're not going to, um, destroy the blade, take any blade away. Your blade is going to be perfect. Um, no problems. So I, I hear a lot about that. that people say, oh, but what about, you know, this kind of steel I hear has a, an easier chance of of rusting or this and that. Because like a 52100s and 51, uh, 5160s, which is what I like to use in my knife, um, The those two steels are phenomenal knife steels. Phenomenal knife steels. And, uh, and KHHI, uh, KukriHouse.com, they do an amazing job with this steel. Um, so what I like to do is at camping, I'll just bring a little bottle of oil. So a little tiny, like a little, you know, the, to the, uh, travel size things that you just stick right in your bag. Don't even know it's there. You can even get the kind that dangle off your bag, a little bit of oil after every use, wipe it down, you know, with whatever rag you have, your camp rag, wipe it down, throw a little bit of oil on there. Bada bing, bada boom. No problem. No problem at all. Now, the only thing I really can't do right now because my arm is throw, but I'm wondering if I can give it a shot with my right hand. I don't even know. I have to set up a target and everything. Hold on. All right. You know what? I'm going to try it left-handed. I'm going to go from the wrist because I can't do anything else. Let's see. It's oh, a weird... Oh. <laughs> that was... The most crippled wow that went in there that was the most crippled looking throw it looked like this i threw it from the wrist and it just went through the air ah the knife is built so good i guess it really doesn't matter if you're crippled or not the thing is going to throw um but here it is man the d-bad camp master in all its glory this thing is amazing it is amazing it really needs to be in the hand of a smaller person because you're gonna say wow it's a lot bigger than it looked before um but holy mackerel holy mackerel this thing is awesome i mean comfortable usable you see what it what it is this is a camp knife true and true through and through it's gonna get you there it's gonna get you there and back when you're talking about um 
when you're talking about camp life, man. Two inches wide. This thing is insane. In freaking sane. So uh, keep your eye on the Kukri House. Uh, they will have this up on the website pretty soon for sale. Um, and let me tell you, if you're a camper, a hiker, or just somebody who loves amazing knives, um, this one right here is definitely, definitely something you're going to want to add to your collection. Awesome freaking knife. This is going to be my forever camp knife. My forever camp knife. I'll always have a secondary blade somewhere for something. But this one right here, I mean, why would I want to make an ultimate camp knife if it wasn't going to be my ultimate camp knife? So that's it. I am Donnie B. All Day. And until next knife.